Today on Grace Performance Repair, we are continuing the Buick piston ring job. So this is episode three. If you have not seen episode two, or if you have not seen episode one, be sure to click those links and uh, we will continue where we left off. All right, so where we left off before was I had to clean the pistons and get the rings taken care of. Before I do the install process on this vehicle, I do want to cover something, and it's and it's related to the rings as far as setting up the gap. So here is oil second top ring. The measurements that I had showed you on a previous episode, the second ring was 15 thousandths on the tight side and 20 thousandths on the loose side. When it comes to getting ring gap correct, this particular vehicle, now you're gonna have to check per application, but this is kind of a general rule of thumb as well. So it's four thousandths of an inch for every inch of bore is what you want for ring gap on a stock application. That bore is 3.42, I believe. So I just put 3.5 in the calculator because it's gonna give me a bigger end number and give me a better result. And it was just over 14 thousandths of a ring gap is what I would have ended up with after I calculated it. So 14 thousandths is my minimum range that I wanna go. And so this definitely is beyond the minimum range on the second ring. Now, the top ring, I put it in there and it was way tight. I mean like 10 thousandths. Normally stock rings end up over the ring gap that is the minimum uh, without any gapping whatsoever. So it's usually pretty nice and easy, straightforward. You don't have to do anything, you just put it all together and you're good to go. But on this engine, it is not gonna be like that because the top ring was way tight. So I actually had to gap the top ring on this engine and I put it at 14 thousandths because as soon as it starts wearing out, it's gonna you know, get smaller or a bigger gap anyway. And that'll minimize oil consumption as well by having a better seal. Another thing you wanna do is you don't wanna put the ring gap on the thrust side, so where these skirts are, you want to put it on the sides of the piston here. Uh, that way there's less chance of it galling the cylinder or scratching the cylinder wall. We will go ahead and get started. I'm going to put a little dab of oil here and then I will oil the cylinders. Alright, I am to the point now of installing the fourth and final piston, so I wanted to show you guys the process. They're all the same darn thing. Here is the fourth and final piston. You can see I have a ring compressor on here. Now if you look closely, you'll be able to tell that this thing is very crooked. And I kind of did that on purpose. It's as crooked as it can be for the tightness. I don't know if you can see this gap in here, but there's a gap over here and it's against the piston over here. It's as tight as it can go. Now, I did that on purpose to show you guys something while installing it. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put the bearing in here. Now, typically it's best to leave the bearing out so you don't drop it on the floor. But these pistons, I did the one without the bearing and I'm gonna slide that one in later to show you how that process works but these pistons slide in so nice and easy that I'm not worried about the bearing itself flying out of this surface. We'll go ahead and we'll put this in here. Now you have to line up the tang. I have this wiped down. I still have to wipe this off. It's got oil on it. So you can see the bearing condition here. There's a few lines in it, but it's not like it's completely shot. So it's definitely a reusable bearing. You want to reuse the bearings because they've been worked with these rods. You want to make sure you keep them on the same exact location line the tang up with the slot on this side. That's what I first do. And then I take and I push it down like this. And I kind of just work it back and forth a little bit to make sure it's seated properly. You have to put some kind of assembly lube on here. So I'm just going to use a little bit of assembly grease on the bearing surface. It doesn't take a whole lot. You just need a little bit to coat the surface because I'll be doing the other half of the bearing as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and set this down in there. Another thing I should probably note, I wiped the inside of this with my special concoction of assembly oil here. It's, it's not, it's not Lucas Stabilizer. There is Lucas Stabilizer in here, but it's not strictly Lucas Stabilizer. Uh, so keep that in mind. I do wipe oil in here. That way when I tighten it down on the rings, all the rings will pull that oil into the cylinder and then it will be oiled before starting. Now, you remember I said that I had this on the piston crooked. What you need to do is take a light rubber hammer like this and just work it until it's bottomed out against the deck of the block. Then you can take the back handle part of the hammer and of course you want to make sure it's in the correct position. I have the arrow on this side here 
pointing towards the front and you want to try and make it as square as possible especially like these two here because they go all the way down before they contact the bearing surface but let's go ahead and slide this in here so i'm just going to set the hammer there and i'm lightly going to tap on the top of it just to get it started now this one stopped so that is not good and it may have had to do with it being so crooked on there that it didn't get tight enough so we're going to pull this up and take a look and see where it stopped right here there's an oil ring starting to pop out of here. You always want to be very careful. Those oil rings are very easy to damage. So I'm going to reset this. And this time I'm going to square it up a little bit better before I tighten it down. Okay, now, before I do it again, this probably has not Yep, there's a little gap there. So I'm going to go ahead. That's from tapping on it. I'm going to make sure it's seated down in there again so it doesn't fall out. And then we will go right back to where we were very carefully trying not to scratch the cylinder walls whatsoever we will set this in here now we'll do the same thing again where we tap this down to try and make it on full contact mode all right keep in mind when i'm doing this i'm pushing down on that ring compressor and that's the best way i didn't do it on the last one to see if it would bind and sure enough it did and i found the best practice is to hold down on that and then give this guy a light push and it is in, it's all the way down, it's below the deck. So I know it's fully in because that's on top dead center right now. Um, surprisingly, this does sit a little bit below the deck, but that's okay. Now I have to go underneath and put all the rod caps on here and put the bearing on this one and then put the rod cap on this one. We are under the car now and we are looking at the rod bearing surface right here. And you can see that the connecting rod is loose so that I can squeeze the bearing under there. So I had to push this up just a little bit to get enough room for the bearing. The bearing itself, we have grease on the surface of it, the that grease that I showed you before, and then we have the notch right there. Now, bearings are typically magnetic. So you can take and put it on the end of a magnet like this. You gotta make sure you have it in the right orientation so that you can rotate it around. But that grease is gonna hold it against that surface there. So I'll push it down to get a kind of vacuum and I should be able to pull the magnet right off of there. And then I can take this guy and I can rotate it until it lines up with the piston area. Then I'm gonna take the piston and I'm gonna pull it down. I now have the bearing installed on or the connecting rod side. So now I'm gonna take the other half of it and I have the tang. I'm gonna make sure the tang stays in the right position. And then if you remember from before, I have a mark that I put on there with an arrow to make sure I put it on the right way. Is put it on a socket like this and guide this guy all the way up there until I line up the bolt with the bolt hole and start threading it in. And of course the other bolt, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in there and thread it in as well. So there up there by hand right now and I'm gonna take an impact yes but it is a variable trigger very easy to control and I'm just gonna go until it doesn't impact just so if it does impact it'll be one little click like that and that's it and I have done that on every one of these so I know that those bolts are not gonna be too tight so now I have to go get my torque wrench these are torque to yield bolts so I'm gonna have to torque them down and then set a degree of torque to it and then I have to start working on the timing chain part of it. Okay, so you can see the bottom right corner of your screen is where the mains and the rods are, and I got those all torqued down. But on the top of the screen there, you can see the timing chain, and I have the timing cover off. Now, it was pretty easy. I mean, the balancer, the tensioner, and then there was these bolts on the outside that had to come off. Here is the challenging part. So if you look at those links, the one on the right, there's a dot on the sprocket. Hopefully you can see that but the dot on the sprocket lines up with what I think is the miscolored link. The links, the color on them is very, very faint. And to line up the timing marks on this, you have to line up the link to the color. We're gonna go up top and see how I supported the timing chain to hold it where it is. What I'm gonna have to do down here where the main sprocket is, is I have to create a, or find a clamp that I can clamp and hold the chain onto the sprocket to keep it in position for when I put the cylinder heads on. So as you can see here, we have the chain just held up by a bungee cord going up to the top of the hood. So it's actually a pretty simple setup just to keep stress against it so that I can still adjust 
the chain to try and line it up. We will get to putting the cylinder head on because I'm not putting the timing cover on until I have the cylinder head on because I hate to have that chain jump. Right here is one of those darker links. So that link is much easier to see. And there is another one, I believe, right there. So I'm gonna do a little more inspecting, but I believe I have it in the right position. All right, so we are to the point now where I am going to get the parts back on the cylinder head. In the gasket set, it did come with new seals for the injectors. So I am gonna put the seals right here on. Now, when you're doing these, uh, they can definitely be a bit tricky, and you wanna do this a decent amount of time before you put them in the head. Uh, and I'll explain that in just a second. But first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead, use a pick, and very carefully remove the seals. Now, since I'm replacing them, I got the pick under here, I can just go ahead and tear them. And it makes it a lot easier to remove, because these things are typically pretty hard. Uh, sometimes when you're putting the pick under there, just putting the pick under there alone is enough to break the seal. Now when it comes to putting the new seals on, they are a very hard seal. Now, they did not include any kind of seal installer tool. I'm gonna go ahead first and try to get the seal on, hopefully without tearing it. Now you'll notice I'm only gonna do one injector at a time, and that's just in case I wreck a seal and I don't have enough to finish all the seals. Like say if I wreck only one seal, what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave one in the back in place and just do the one on the front because that's the main seal. If I wreck two of them, I'll leave two injectors where the back seals are in, but hopefully I won't wreck any of them. Okay, so I got the seal around it without needing a special tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it quickly to get it over to this side. Now I'm gonna take and work the seal a little bit to try and squish it back down. And what's gonna happen here is as this thing sits, it's gonna slowly shrink back down to its normal size. And just to be sure that it does that, I'm only gonna do one injector for now, and I'm gonna walk away for a little bit, and then I'll go ahead and tackle the rest of them if it goes well. Well, it didn't go as good as planned. I, I let it sit for a little bit, and that little bit did not allow it to shrink down on its own. These are kinda tight on here now, uh, but in order to get it like that, I had to use some heat shrink tubing here. So I'll show you exactly what I did now. These ones are all sloppy loose on the rest of these because I just put these on. These ones are actually tight. Obviously they're not the full width here, but they must have set that up to squish when you put it in the head to where it fits properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this and let you guys see the process of me doing these three real quick. That just to get them shrunk down a little bit better. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add just a real small amount of oil to the surface of the cylinder head where these are gonna go in, and then I will slowly work them in and then we will get to putting the cylinder head back on. So I'm just gonna gently lay this gasket right here, and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and replace this quick. So this guy, you can get under it with a pick to break it free, and then just take the new one, set it down in there, and you're good to go. Uh, as far as getting this head gasket on though, it's gonna be a little bit tricky because I wanna keep this chain in line. Now if you remember, I left the stuff off on the bottom half, that way in case I do have a jump or something, it's not a big deal. But the reason for this bungee, oh, I think I just made a jump, go figure. The reason for this bungee is so that it holds it up while I'm doing everything. So all I'm gonna do is take, hold it like that, and then feed this guy through here like a so. Up. And then go through the motion of setting this gasket down into place. Better double check things, because I could have this on backwards. I forgot to check which direction it's laying. And I think I have it on the wrong way. Yes, I do. Flip this over. Okay, so right here it says up. So that's obviously the up. This gap here does not work over there, but it works here. And then on top of that, the rivets, there's like a little relief in the block here to allow for those rivets to sit in. Now when I'm touching this, I'm trying to avoid touching anything that's not metal. So you want to try and avoid getting too much grease on there. Dry and clean as your goal. Now these guys here, when I put the cylinder head on, they're gonna be a problem unless I do something to hold them out like this. Usually manipulate the head to make it work, but that head is so heavy. I'm gonna see if I can try and find a solution to hold this in place quick. Okay, so I found this nice little rubber band here. This will be perfect to uh, hold everything in place. So I'm gonna go grab the cylinder head and try and get it up here and in place. I wanna try not to scratch this, especially. That should make it a little bit of a tricky 
endeavor. Okay, this took me a little bit of finagling. I would normally be doing this because this head's so heavy with the cherry picker, but I could not get the cherry picker over here. What I came up with here is just kind of a contraption. I, I hold up this end, or held this end up with the head sitting down here. I put the board on it, then used the board and slid the chain and then put this stuff under here to hold it up high enough and just slowly worked it and tried to avoid getting the chain uh, caught in anything and then I avoided getting the exhaust manifold to touch the gasket because if the exhaust manifold touches the gasket it might scrape the gasket and cause a leak. I am going to fish this guy through here and what I'm going to use is one of these hose hooks. So I'm going to take this guy, I'm holding tension again against it, I'm going to keep pulling up by doing it here as well. And then I'm going to run this guy through here and grab a hold of it. I'm going to go ahead and start lowering this and the way I'm going to do that is by removing these boards over here and I'm going to watch for these tensioner or guides to make sure they go through where they're supposed to and then once I have them started inside the head I'm going to pull that rubber band over there. Okay, I'm to the point now where I think I'm ready to finish setting it down. So I'm going to grab it up here and work with this board. Once I move this just right, it will fall into place. It's really close to where it needs to be. So I just got to wiggle it until the dowels line up. This thing's giving me trouble right here. I'm going to try tipping the head and see if I can make it work that way. There it is, all set down into place. That concludes this episode, the third episode. Uh, we are going to continue on on the fourth episode and try and get this thing finished, assembled. And I will continue where we left off next week. Thanks for joining me.